I bought a milling machine, but when I bought one, I didn't have anywhere to put it, so I decided to build a stand with some storage, and I made it out of some of the most cheapest materials I can find. And today, I'm going to walk you through how I did it. Alright, so we're building the milling table, and we've got a bit of this 30 by 30 by 2 mil box section, and that's what the frame's going to be made out of. I'll start this project by measuring out the bench that holds the lathe as I'd like to make the milling bench to be the same size. I use the world's most unpleasant tool to chop down these metal bars to the correct size. With the welder out I can clamp up the metal to construct one half of the frame. I first tacked everything together and then used some full welds after I was certain that everything was in the right place. I'm using a flux cord nib welder for all my welding and this option is great for anybody who is looking to start welding around the house. Which reminds me, what did the arc welder say to the MIG welder? Let's bond over some metal and make some sparks fly. Holy shit, that is terrible. I'm never letting AI write another joke for me. With one half of the frame done, I can make a second identical one and use the extra bars to space them out. Once again, I tack welded all the joints and then did some full welds at the end. The milling machine is quite heavy and it weighs about 180 kilos, so I'm adding this extra bar in just to support the weight a little bit more. Now the frame didn't come out as square as what I would have liked, and I think that's mostly because I was riding on two saw horses, so the frame has a little bit of a rock to it. But that's okay as I took this into my design and I've added some adjustable feet so I can make sure the machine is nice and level. Each of these feet can hold 200 kilos, so I'm sure it will be strong enough. The main construction of the frame is done, and now it's just time for the final details. So all the metal work is done, we also welded those little brackets and gave it a coat of paint. So now we're just going to work on the wood, which is going to be for the tops, the sides and the drawers. I hope you're not scared of the dark, because we're out here and chopping up some wood. I'm using the circular saw to cut all these sheets down to size. I'm using chipboard for this project, and if you're wondering why I'm using flooring material for cabinetry, it's because it's just for my shed, and it is a lot cheaper. The top was the first to go on, I lined it up perfectly and used the brackets underneath to screw it on. I didn't just want chipboard for the top as this is where all the oil and hot chips are going to land, so I put down some construction adhesive and laid on a metal sheet over the top. While that was drying I decided to attach the sides. I was using self ring screws, but it doesn't matter what type you get, they are all useless and you have to give them a little hand by drilling a pilot hole first. The sides are attached and the four slid in perfectly I might add, and I started screwing it all in. How embarrassing. It's been a good couple of years since I snapped the drill a bit while drilling. Never mind, let's carry on. The floor is secured and the top is now dry so I used a diagram in the manual to drill the mounting holes for the mill to sit on. The holes were M12 bolts so I drilled a 13mm hole just so I have a little bit of wiggle room. The mill needed to be moved that day as this is not my trailer and the owner wanted it back. So I enlisted the help of dad and we used the engine crane to take it off and move it over. This was quite a stressful move as I really did not want to drop it as it cost a fair bit of money. 
When we got it over to the bench, we saw that the crane wouldn't lift it high enough to get onto the table, so we had to lower it and shorten the chain so it would reach. We had put the mill on some blocks because we noticed that the hand crack for the head was really close to the bench top, lifting it up just gave us a little bit more room. Now the mill is in place and the trailer is out of the shed, it's time to crack on with the build. I used some more chipboard to make the jaws, because again, money. These jaws are about 400mm wide by about 450mm deep, so they are a pretty decent size. If you do a bit of woodwork and you don't have some of these corner clamps, I highly recommend some. They are absolute lifesavers on some jobs. When I said I used some of the cheapest materials on this job, I wasn't lying. For the bottoms, I'm using OSB, possibly the cheapest stuff out there. This particular sheet was used earlier in the beginning of the video when I painted the frame, and it was also used when painting another project, but that project was a failure, and you'll never see or hear about that project again. Anyway, the drawers are together and I'm attaching the runners to the cabinet. I'm not going to run through how to attach runners, because I'm pretty sure the way I do it is really incorrect, but they hold up so I'm happy. Also moved the mill over to the other side of the shed because it was hitting the lathe. With the drawers in place, I can drill some holes for the hinges on the door. Once again, I'm not doing a step by step of mounting the door because I'm pretty certain it's wrong. But the door is mounted which means we can close the door on this project. And immediately open it back up again because we need to fill it with machining tools, prime it, and then paint it a colour I'm not 100% sure that I like, and now we can close the door on this project. Thanks for watching this video and how I put together a milling table. In the next video I will go over the milling machine and maybe, just maybe, even do some milling too. Thanks for watching and bye for now.